Hi, it's Corrine, and not too long ago I shared a inks cube storage that I made that works perfect for me. I like to store all my inks in these 12 by 12 containers. They do sell these containers separate. Mine came in a bin from Michaels a really long time ago, and the bin holds six of these in them, and they slide right in them. I show them in my craft room tour video, but I was looking for a solution to store all my ink cubes in one place. I do have some of the Tim Holtz Distress Ink Holders tins, and these are great. However, I wanted something where they could all be out and I didn't have to pull out 10 of these when I'm working on a project. So my solution, I could have put them directly in here, but they were sliding around. I, even with that non-stick grip stuff, they were moving around, the lids were coming off, and then I could not double stack them. By making this, I'm able to double stack them with one underneath and they stack perfectly on top of each other and then I can keep them in this bin and put them pull them out set them next to each other and put them right behind me and they're just easy to grab I left enough room in each of them so I can grab them with one of these tins you kind of have to um, when they're in next to each other you kind of have to uh, push them out to get them like this so I purposely left enough room in this here is an empty one just to show you hopefully to get a better look I thought about spray painting it but I decided not to it's sitting inside that little cubicle so I there's really no need for it but you can make it much prettier than just the raw chipboard if you want what I did is I used this is 12 by 12 I'm going to show you on a smaller scale because I don't need another one of these so instead of wasting tape and chipboard and glue, I'm going to just show you on a much smaller scale, but you can make it up to a 12 by 12 if you want. So here is the side. This is the Gorilla Tape. And then this down here is the flat chipboard. These are what I added to the top of it. And again, I'll show you, and that gives me all these different compartments. So again, using a 6 by 6 piece as a guide, you, if you want to make one just like that, that fits in one of those 12 by 12 containers, which by the way, I just picked up another container at Walmart. They sell them in the craft section, at least at my Walmart, and they will hold a 12 by 12. So they're great to have. You would want to make this piece, your bottom piece, a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. And, and then you're going to need a few other pieces. So you're going to need four pieces these are cut to one and a half by six. So you can cut these to one and a half by whatever size you're going to be doing. So if you're going to be doing a 12, 12 by 12 bottom piece, you want to cut these 12 by one and a half. And these are going to glue on all four corners. Then we're also going to make two of these to go on the inside. I did three with my 12 by 12, but obviously the six by six is going to be smaller so we're going to need a smaller space we'll set those aside and work on those in, in a minute so let's just first work on this so again these are one and a half by six inches and I'm going to pull out my Fiskars paper trimmer and for this I'm using a used blade I switched it out for my normal blade because it will dull it pretty quickly so if you have an extra blade or an old blade that you you can designate strictly for your chipboard that's perfect so go ahead and take your one and a half piece and score it at one half inch this paper trimmer is not strong enough to cut all the way through this medium weight chipboard I'm using graphics mini medium weight chipboard but it does score it when I run it back and forth so I'm going to do that to all four pieces put it in at a half inch I'm measuring it on this side at a half inch and running this back and forth And now hopefully you can see that it gave me a, a great score that I can fold against it and now it gives me my my hinge I scored this one at one inch so let me fix that real quick
So I'm folding this against the way that I scored it. I scored it on this side. I'm going to fold it away from that. And now we're going to glue these to the bottom all the way around. When I made mine, I used wet glue. You can use whatever type of glue is going to work best for you. I'm going to, I don't know how hot my heat gun is, but I'm going to go ahead and use my heat gun. The only bad thing is you don't have a lot of time to work with it. You need to just hurry up and put it in place. But that's kind of why I want to do it for a video so it saves a little time. So we're putting the larger piece on the bottom and gluing it. Our half inch is what's going to be sticking up. So again, this is our little half inch piece that's going to be sticking up. The rest of it we want to glue to the bottom. And um, I measured these out for the video, but when I made mine, I wasn't planning on doing a tutorial on it. I wasn't even planning on sharing it at the time. So I really didn't measure these pieces. The only thing I measured was I did want a half inch lip on each side, but besides that, I just used scrap pieces of chipboard. So if you don't have, um, you know, this size chipboard and you just have, you know, maybe a larger or a smaller size, it doesn't matter as long as all of your lynch so they match. Piece to go in the center just to even it out and I grabbed a scrap piece so let me cut this down slightly and I'll be right back okay so I didn't measure this I just cut it and again you just want it so it just makes it a little bit more even go ahead and glue that down it's not gonna be pretty on the bottom if you want it to be pretty you can add paper when all is said and done or if you're making a 12 by 12 piece you can add another 12 by 12 piece on the bottom and that would cover up all these edges here so now the next thing I did is I used Gorilla Tape this is a really strong tape I'm using the one inch I got it from the hardware section at Walmart you're gonna want some non-stick scissors to cut this and I just eyeballed it and cut it and you want to go up to the edge here we're going to be this is going to enforce our sides and hold them up in place so I'm going to go up to the edge but not over the edge bend it where I want and then fold it over And now you can cut this, you can cut it to where it's flush on one end, which is how I made mine. And then we'll go back and add pieces that wrap around, or you could wrap that piece around, whatever's going to be easiest for you. I'm just going to cut this off for now. And we're going to do that to all four sides. Again, I'm going to first start with the top piece. I'm going to fold it up the way I want and then bend it around the back portion. I'll cut that excess off. I do at the end go and add pieces to those as well. So let me go ahead and do these other two pieces quickly. Okay. 
Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and add a piece around each of these corners to make sure that they are adhered together. So just eyeballing it, I cut a piece, and then I also cut strips from it, because that's all you really need are a few strips of the tape. I tried this with duct tape because I had run out of my Gorilla Tape and I was in the middle of my project and it was probably two in the morning, so I just wanted to finish, but it really didn't work well, so I would highly suggest the Gorilla Tape. So now I'm just holding that tight and adding that around the corner. So again, this is open right here. I'm gonna take my strip and put this in place where I want it and bend that around the corner. And now it holds that corner perfectly together. Do that for this one as well. Hold it where I want, bend it around, and it's gonna hold that perfectly in the corner. I'm not gonna worry about this one because I don't need this. I'm just doing this for demonstration. So the next thing we wanna do is make these to go inside. I made three of them. You're, if you're making the large one like I did originally, you're gonna to wanna to make three. For this demonstration, only two will fit in here. So I'm just gonna show you how I made two. So let me pull out my trimmer again. This piece is, of course, six inches to match the height. And this is two and a half inches wide. So we're going to score it at one half inch on both sides. So we're gonna score it at one half inch, flip it all the way around and one half inch. Okay, so I scored the left side. Now I'm gonna turn it 180 degrees and do the, the other side, the opposite side. Again, scoring that at one half inch. So now we wanna fold into that score and bend those corners up. And we're going to reinforce that with the tape as well, the exact same way we did. So just eyeballed this. It doesn't have to go all the way across. I did on mine because I really wanted it to hold up well, but you don't have to be that precise about it if you choose not to. And same thing, I'm gonna just go up towards the top, get that where I want first then bend this the way I want it to stay up because I don't want it like this. I'm gonna want it up. Once I get it in place, then I'm gonna fold this tape over on the back to hold that in place. So as you can see, what we're doing with that is this side tends to stay like this. We wanna keep it in the upright position. So I'll do the same thing to the other side. Put it up towards the top. I would, if, like I said, on my original, I did go from edge to edge. I would take a little more time if I were you and do that. Like I said, that's completely up to you. So again, I'm gonna put it in the position that I want. So I'm gonna hold it more up here and then fold that Gorilla Tape over. Okay, and now we have this little section that's going to be perfect to add our ink cubes to. It's a perfect amount that it holds it snug, but not too snug. I left a little bit of room on each side. So now the next thing we're gonna do is just adhere these in. What I did when I was adhering mine is I used my ink cubes as a guide. So I set them in place and then I push these. I didn't push them all the way against each other because I don't want them that snug. I wanted a little bit of room, but that's just personal choice. So use these as a guide, add your glue. I used E6000 and I was able to, it, you can add um, hot glue as well, but once it's down, it's down. With the E6000, I was able to adjust it if I needed to be. For this video, I'm going to use hot glue, but I would not suggest using hot glue just because you want the option to be able to move it around. So again, keep these where you want, place this in, and then press it down. So now you have a section there, and a section here, and then another section. And then again, I moved 
these over to this side and use that as my guide to place the next one. Because I made such a small one, I don't have room for this, but you making the 12 by 12, you would have more room. So I hope this tutorial makes sense. I hope it helps and um, let me know if you end up making one. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thanks.